Valerie, you are the author of a new policy brief that looks at community-based legal aid regulation and the implications it can have to secure land rights for women. Expanding legal aid programs across countries sounds like a step in the right direction. But as the term regulation indicates, governments need to get involved to get them off the ground. How did the government get involved in Tanzania where you did an evaluation of the community paralegal program? I think what's interesting about Tanzania is that there's really a mandate um, from the donor side and from the local NGO side to spread the programs throughout the country. And so there have been very strong proponents for these programs in Tanzania to reach people all over the country in very remote areas. And so quite a few grants and opportunities have been offered um, for NGOs to spread the, the program throughout the country. And because of the, the need for these services and the widespread um, nature of these programs in Tanzania, on top of um, some of the lessons we've been learning from other countries, um, there was this feeling that in order to um, standardize, there was a need to standardize the core requirements of paralegals and the curriculum that they might receive when they're trained. Um, and for this reason, I think donors and stakeholders were trying to get the government involved as they would need to authorize and develop um, bodies to provide certification um, and to make sure that these requirements were met. Just to get an idea, how expensive is a program like that? So for the particular program we are evaluating, um, it costs something like $1,800 per paralegal. And one third of the cost is actually due to the, um, to the training, because the training is quite expensive and, and costly. Um, one of the issues with the cost being that aren't necessarily considered is that there, there are dropout rates. Um, a lot of these paralegal, these community-based paralegal programs are voluntary. And of course, if you're trying to attract women to become paralegals and help other women, or if you're trying to attract um, you know, people well-respected in the community, these, there are opportunity costs to their time, and they have quite a few constraints on their time. And so they're oftentimes not able to continue being um, paralegals and drop out. So what is the biggest limitation of the program? Um, as far as we have been witnessing on the ground, the biggest limitation we think is the educational requirement. Um, as in the brief, we put, uh, the educational requirement in Tanzania is something, um, a form for equivalent. Um, and since some of the programs in Tanzania have relaxed that requirement to form for leavers, which means um, they might have taken um, the form for class but not passed the official exam, or, or there's um, some other conditions too. But we show in our brief that this actually still involves um, this um, increase. The, the pool of applicants is still quite small when you um, impose this kind of requirement. And also one of the limitations we find with this requirement is that many of the older, well-respected, or not older, but many of the community leaders that would be obvious choices to be voluntary paralegals and that are well respected by the community and village leaders are often not chosen because they don't meet this requirement. And instead, what we find is you have young, maybe shy people um, that don't command the same respect in the community becoming paralegals. And obviously, this changes um, what type of programs might be offered in the future. You're touching on something that I find quite interesting is uh, the fact that you obviously shifting the power relations and usually usually the political economy reacts quite harsh when it comes to shifting that arrangement at the grassroots level what do you think oh yeah i mean we've we've seen cases where um, paralegals have been threatened by village leaders essentially because there's extortionary behavior um, going on within the village village lead leaders or ward governments might be um, benefiting from having um, legal fees or false accusations being made on people within the community. So we have definitely seen some tension in a very small number of communities between paralegals and um, the local political leaders. So what do you do about it? 
there's nothing we can do at this moment because um, these paralegals aren't officially certified. They're part of NGO programs and uh, there's no authoritative body basically supporting them. And I think this is one of the reasons why it's important to get government involved in some of in some of the regulation of these programs. Okay, the uh, policy brief you put together had four su succinct recommendations to guide future legal aid policy. Also in other countries then obviously. All of them uh, are very technical and uh, or practical in their application. What is the idea uh, to be very hands-on or what are you trying to do with the recommendations? Maybe you can go a little bit into the recommendations. I think what we're trying to do is that make some recommendations knowing the, the environment and the context of these programs in Tanzania. And the requirements and the programs are all evolving over time um, and, and people are learning because there's no official legislation yet for Tanzania bill is being formulated and there's no authoritative body yet. And so the idea is to rec what we try to recommend in this policy brief is perhaps consider relaxing the educational requirements, think about um, things that are more accessible um, that would allow um, a greater pool of applicants to be considered as paralegals, which is really important in these rural areas. Um, so relax the educational requirement. Another thing that we try to recommend is maybe reduce the standardized training, which is now 24 days, um, to a core of two weeks and perhaps, and then have more follow-up training. Another thing um, that we try to talk about is the training curriculum itself. Um, what we found is some of the, and this goes in hand with our second recommendation, is some of the topics are quite, um, unnecessary in rural areas such as labor law requirements. And then the fourth recommendation that we have is um, with respect to just recognizing there's two tiers of paralegals, one that would be considered professional where they have official certification from a university or program, and then the volunteer paralegals who would have less stringent recommendations, but the benefit of having them is they increase access to these to legal services for people in remote and rural areas and offer referral to these more professional paralegals and lawyers if they need to go to court. Thank you very much. Thank you.